thanks again. Uh, thanks for being tonight. You're blessed. And uh, the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Um, the sermon tonight, the great work known as kindness. The great work known as kindness. And kindness is something that we really need to uh, work on at times. And kindness is something that needs to be reflected in what we do and what we say. And I think there's a lot to learn from kindness. Here it is. We're two days from Thanksgiving. Look forward to that. And uh, we'll get together with friends and family. Um, it's a time to show kindness to one another and be good to one another and uh, show that you care for one for another. And uh, it's a, it's something that you know it's a good witness. Right. So uh, we will start tonight in Acts, the twenty uh, seventh chapter, and uh, we'll start the twenty third verse. And it says, "For there stood by me this night the angel of God, who I am and who I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul." Thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given them, given thee all them that sail with thee. Now read it again. Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar, and lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. Howbeit we must cast upon a certain island. And you go to Acts 28, 1 and 2, and it says, And when they were escaped, then they knew that the island was called Melita. And the barbarous people showed us no little kindness, for they kindled a fire and received us every one because of the present rain and because of the cold. You see, it's a, it's a kind act. They were on a boat. They were on a ship. And they went to an island. And the people had a reputation of being, bar it says barbarous. Right. You think about barbarians, you think about ruffians, you think about people that are hard-natured, hardcore people, okay? Right. You think about that. And it's like, it says right here, it's like, but even though they had a reputation, they kindled the fire and received the silver one. Have you ever been received? And have you ever been in a place where you weren't received? Yeah. Have you ever been to a place where there was kindness and gladness and openness of heart and people were welcoming? And have you ever been into a place where it seemed like they didn't want you there? Right. Ever been to a place where it seemed like they didn't care if you were there, didn't want to see you, didn't want to know you? There's a coldness there. There's there's a thing there. It's a, it's a place that, that's not enviable. And it says right here, that the barbarous people showed us no little kindness. It was a fact that it was a great kindness. Yeah. They kindled a fire and received us. It was raining and cold, but they were welcomed. And there's fewer things that will show a person more kindness than warmth and friendliness, especially when it's unexpected. Yeah. You walk into a situation, it's unexpected kindness, it's unexpected generosity, it's unexpected friendship, and it brings a warmth, and it brings it brings a, a place that you're willing to open up, you're willing to trust, you're willing to, to share love and show kindness and share friendships and, and, and be good one to another. And I feel that's what God has us, that's what he's called us to be. He wants us to be good one to another. He wants us to show kindness. He wants us to be Friendly. He wants us to do those things. Right. So we need to go out and understand that even though the situation may not be what we want it to be, sometimes we're going to walk into a situation and it'd be like, well, I'm not sure how I'm going to be treated. I'm not sure how what's going to be said. Is there kindness? We need to show kindness, folks. Right. We really need to show kindness. We're going to go to... Um, 2 Samuel, the ninth chapter, the 6th and 7th verse. And uh, I know this is some favorite verses here. Uh, we've talked about this before. And it says in 2 Samuel 9, 6 and 7, it says, 
Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come into David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth, and he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show you the kindness. Hear that. David, the king, says, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. What a wonderful story this is. We've got a situation here. According to Samuel, I, 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 I looked this up. Mephibosheth, when he was five years old, and this is in 2 Samuel, the fourth chapter, the fourth verse. So when he was five, when both his father and grandfather died at the battle of Mount Gilboa, after the deaths of Saul and Jonathan, Mephibosheth's nurse took him and fled in panic, and in her haste the child fell and or was dropped, and because of that he was injured to the place where he couldn't walk. And then some years later, after the ascension to the kingship, the United Monarchy, uh, King David sought out someone of the house of Saul to whom he may show kindness to God. And Mephibosheth was brought to him. And David restored Saul's inheritance to Mephibosheth and permitted him to live in his palace in Jerusalem. Now you talk about kindness. It was a restoration of kindness. It was being restored. It was being given what he had not had. Mephibosheth, like I said, he couldn't walk. And you'd have to think in that day and time, you know, you had to labor to show your worth on a lot of stuff. And for a person that couldn't walk, that's going to really limit them on what they can do and what they can produce. And here he is. He, he, he's like, he gets thrown, more or less. He fell on his face. He was taken to David, fell on his face. And Mephibosheth, said, Behold, thy servant. And he's like, I'm just hoping, hey, just have mercy on me. Right. I'll be a servant. I'll be a slave. Mm -hmm. I'll do what you ask me to. Just please have mercy on me. But see, there was a higher place. There was something taking place here. There was a situation where David stepped in and said, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. Sometimes it's who you know. Praise God, if you know Jesus tonight, you're in good. If you know God tonight, you're in good. If you've got his blood, praise the Lord, you're in good. It's because of who our Father is tonight, praise God. And it says right there, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake. Praise the Lord. You know what? I think day in, day out, we get kindness showed to us spiritually yeah. and, and because we know who the Father is and that our Father's God. And our Father's blessing us, and we're saved, and praise the Lord, we're a joint heir of Christ, and we've got blessings, praise the Lord, and it's all because of the Father. That's right. Praise God. That's much to give thanks for tonight, because of the Father. And it says, I will restore thee all the land saw thy Father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. You know what that sounds like? That sounds like a relationship. That sounds like something that's not going to fade. That sounds like something that's like, you invited to my house and you can stay at my house. I'm going to give you the keys to my house. I want you to think about that tonight. How many people you give the keys to the things you owe to? How many people you give your most prized possession? Have them, hey, you're welcome to them. Think about that tonight. That's where Mephibosheth landed. That's where, praise the Lord. And why? Because it was upon David to show kindness. And why did he want to show kindness? Because he was honoring God. And it's like, you know what? I'm going to restore thee the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Praise the Lord. Lord, that's where I want to be. I want to eat at the Father's. I want to eat at his table right. continually. Not just every now and then. Right. I will, you know, we talk about Thanksgiving coming up. That's a once a year deal. Boy, we'll make a big old meal gets made. Plans are made. And people cook the day before. And you're eating leftovers two or three days after the fact. And everybody just getting fat and happy. Most part. Blessed. Thankful. 
Here's this guy, probably didn't have a whole lot to him. But here he is now, he's being restored. And you know, that's the thing about Jesus, he'll restore. He'll restore your joy, he'll restore your peace, he'll restore your happiness. He will restore those things that you need. If you desire something, it tells us to seek, it tells us to ask, it tells us to knock. Praise God. Lord, give us wisdom. Give us hope. Lord, give us peace of mind. Give us strength. Lord God, give us these things, Lord Jesus. Give us the courage to do and be more like you'd have us to do and be, Lord Jesus. Lord God, give us that spirit, Lord. Set us on fire, Lord God. Lord Jesus, help us, Lord God. Lord Jesus, not to look to this world, but to look to you and you alone, Jesus. Lord God, we love you tonight. We praise you tonight. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord God, I thank you for the kindness, Lord yes. God. Yes. Lord, you've given us kindness, Lord Jesus. And we're eating from the table, praise God. We're eating the bread of life, praise Jesus. The Holy Scripture, the wonderful Word of God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We're blessed tonight. Praise God, we're blessed tonight. Yes. Thankful, Jesus. Thankful for Jesus. Yes. Loving this Scripture. Let's go on. We're going to be in Galatians. And go talk about the fruits of the Spirit. Talk about the fruits of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. This is Galatians 5, 22, 23. Galatians 5, 22, 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such, there is no law. Kindness is a fruit of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. How can you show love without Kindness. How can you be at peace without kindness? How can you have gentleness without kindness? Praise the Lord. How can you have goodness without kindness? How can you be meek without having kindness tonight? Praise the Lord. We're to be kind. And it shows in our life. You know those people that are kind and sweet. You know those people like, my goodness, they're just hard and honoring to deal with. You know the difference. You know when you see them. You know how to interact. You know where it's at. God's calling us to be kind. God's calling us to show the fruit of the Spirit. God's calling us tonight to do and be what he'd have us to do and be, praise the Lord. God wants us to have that fruit, that love, that joy, that peace, that long-suffering, that gentleness, that goodness, that faith, the meekness, the temperance. Praise God. Against such there is no law. Praise the Lord. Lord. We can walk in faith. We can walk in liberty. We can walk in strength. We can walk knowing that the Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, the great I am. He's walking with us. Praise God. We can walk in that tonight, Lord Jesus. We can walk in his spirit, Lord Jesus. We thank you tonight for your spirit. Thank you for your word. Praise God. Thank you for that tonight. What a wonderful thing. It's a checklist. I love checklist. Lord, do we have the love? Do we have the joy? Do we have the peace? Oh, you're going to hear about peace the next month. Oh, peace on earth. Peace on earth. Reflecting back to the birth of Christ. Peace on earth. Goodwill toward man. Praise the Lord. The keeper, the maker of peace. The great I am, sweet Jesus. The one that brings true peace. Praise God. Remembering and recognize his sweet birth. There's love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness. Temperance against such, there is no law. There is no words of man that can control that. There is no words of man. They can stomp us down. They can kill us. They can get rid of us. They can dump us in a ditch. But that spirit of rain, that spirit will go somewhere else. Someone else will rise up. Praise God. Someone else will rise up and proclaim the name of Jesus. Somebody else will rise up. Praise God. And honor the great I am. And this spirit will go on and on. That spirit ain't going to die. It's undefeated. Praise God. Sweet Jesus. Amen. And he's telling us to take the fruits of this wonderful spirit. And he's telling us to walk. He's telling us to talk. He's telling us to act. He's telling us to love. He's telling us to show this love. To show the mercy. To show the grace. Praise God. Amen. He's telling us that tonight, brother. Hallelujah. Colossians, we're going to wrap it up tonight. I've got two more verses. Colossians 3, the 12th and the 13th verse. Got another checklist. 
Colossians 3, 12 and 13. Put on therefore, the, as the elect of God, holy blood, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Boy, there's a thanksgiving message. But if you got issues with those around you, forgive them. Do your best to be at peace with them. Pray for them. Love on them. And if they don't want anything to do with you, praise God. Take it to the Lord. Right. Take it to the Lord. Don't take it to the backyard. Don't take it to the streets. Don't jump table on them. Let's ask God, Lord, how would you have me to act? How would you have me to do? What would you have me to say, Lord? You know, I, I, I preached on this before, but I love the first two words on that Colossians 3, 12. It says, put on. That's an action. Right. You got to put that thing on. But it was cold and chilly and rainy today. Buddy, I put me on a coat. Buddy, I had me on a jacket. And that thing kept me dry and warm. And that thing protected me from this cold rain. Praise God. What did I do? I put it on. I made a choice. There you go. I made a choice. I made a decision. I made a choice today. I'm going to put that on. And you and I need to make a choice every day. It says put these things on, praise God, as the elect of God. Hallelujah. Holy and beloved. Holy and beloved. The elect of God. You know what that is? That's the saved. That's the redeemed. That's the ones wanting to be more like Jesus and less like themselves. That's something I pray. James, I think I pray that. Just to keep honest, I'll say once a week, I feel very confident it's sometimes once a day. Help me to be more like God. Lord, help me to be more like you, less like me. Because I know how me is. And me ain't always right. Me always, we'll mess up, we'll trip up, we'll slip, we'll slip up. But God, you're on track. You're number one. You're the best. You're wonderful, Jesus. Bowels of mercy. Oh, have mercy. Help us, Lord. Lord, help us to be merciful. Help us to see others. I was preaching this Sunday. Help us, Lord. Help us to see others with how the eyes of you see them. Help us, God. Lord, we fall short of that. Yeah. Lord, we look at people. Well, they don't talk like me. They don't act like me. They don't believe like I do. And we start setting up borders and we start drawing lines in the sand. They don't want the things that I want. Can't get, they get on my nerves, Lord. We start drawing these lines. And all the time, the Lord's saying, you need to be merciful. You need to be merciful. And I want to tell you something about mercy of God. When you're merciful, there's going to be a day you need that mercy. Right. That thing's going to bounce back to you. And you're going to remember. Oh, God will help you remember. You remember that time he was merciful? You remember that time you went out of your way for such and such? Here it comes back to you. And I'm not saying God's got it like that on a balance sheet or anything like that. But I'm saying the more you're merciful to others, the more mercy will come back to you. Right. We need to strive to be merciful. We need to strive to have kindness. We need to have that humbleness of mind. You know what that humbleness of mind will do? You know what that does? That is round up for pride. That's, That's what that is, buddy. That's good. When you've got humbleness of mind, then you start realizing you ain't good enough. You ain't too good not to do this. You ain't too good to do that. There's times... I was at a restaurant yesterday with honey. We had to go down to dinner. Praise God, got a good report. There was a napkin on the floor of that restaurant. I, it wasn't one we put in. It was, just sit, it was just laying there. And I'm not saying good to get him eat. What I did, though, I bent down, picked that thing up. And why? Because I work in a public place. And I see times when people just drop stuff, leave stuff. Won't pick stuff up. And to me, that annoys me. I just be honest with you. We that annoys me. So I say to myself, I'm not going to be like these others and just leave anything just, just out and back like that. You see something, pick it up. Pick it up! You ain't good enough. You ain't so good you can't pick up a piece of trash. Pick up 
something up. Fix that thing. Pick that thing up. Put a work on. You see? When you have an onlus of mind, you don't get that. Well, so and so should do that. Right. That's so and so's job. Or that's so and so supposed to be like that. Man, that'll hurt you. You can just see that pride bubbling up in that statement. Uh -huh. Oldness of mine, meekness. Oh, Lord. Lord, help me just get by and make do with what you blessed me with and be thankful for that instead of longing and coveting someone else's stuff. Instead of raising my head up and getting all stiff back and getting all whiny when I ain't got what I think I'm supposed to have. Lord God, help us with our meekness. Long suffering. Oh, Lord. Mercy. There's some people I've been praying for for decades. Decades. Been praying. Still praying. Still praying. Why? You get that long suffering. You get that, I want, you get that mm, tenacity. You get that stick to itness. I know that ain't a word that sounds good. You get that stick to itness. You want to stick in. Praise God. Ain't that, buddy, I'm playing it down at the river to the water, buddy. I should not be moved, buddy. Plant that tree. I got deep roots, praise God. Praise the Lord. I'm going to keep on praying. I'm going to keep on believing. I'm going to keep on thanking God. I'm going to keep on waiting for a good report. There's things that aggravate me. There's things that frustrate me. Sometimes I get down. Sometimes get anxieties. Sometimes have fear and doubt. But I'm going to tell you something. Boy, something, that spirit will rise up. Get up. Shake yourself off. Dust yourself off. Quit messing in the mud. Quit rolling around in that mire. Get yourself up. You're a child of the king. Act like a child of the king. But you can have meekness. Lord, I thank you, Jesus, for giving me the strength to get up out of this mud. Lord Jesus, I thank you, Lord, for blessing me with the ability to pick myself up and start moving forward again. Hallelujah. Make us long suffering. Forbear one another. Oh, man. Boy, I wish that hit our nation. My goodness. You got the reds hating the blues and the blues hating the reds. You got the men versus the women and the women versus the man. You got churches battling that. This denomination don't like that denomination. You got them folks don't like them folks. Those folks don't like them that folks. Man, we need to start. Hey, you know what? We are created in what? In the image of God. All of us. That's the scripture. We are wonderfully and fearfully, isn't it? Wonderfully and fearfully made. We are wonderfully and fearfully made. So if we all have very similar background, very similar upbringing, why can't we help one another? Forgive one another. Any man have a quarrel against any? Even as Christ forgave you, so also do you. Jesus is directing us to be kind. Jesus is directing us to be kind. So go through Colossians 3, 12 and 13. Study that. Pray those things. Ask the Lord. Praise God for those things. And ask the Lord to let those things grow in you. 